Winter is fading away, and although some places still have a bit of snow, you can sense the arrival of spring in the air. On a lovely day like this, I'm planning to whip up a special treat. We're talk local dish using them. You might not have tried it, but trust me, it's surprisingly delicious. I did my homework and gathered all the ingredients, including fresh veggies and greens. Now, to make a great meal, you do need to be in the perfect mood, and nothing puts me in a better mood than seeing my favourite he-goat. Now, before sipping my morning coffee, I've already got the fire going. Let's check on it. Looks good. Now, I can start boiling the water with the brains inside. I'm using an old copper kettle. Really antique, in fact. It used to resemble Aladdin's lamb, <laughs> but not anymore, I'm afraid. Around 5 to 10 minutes after boiling begins, you'll notice some foam forming on the meat. It's edible, but not very appealing, so I skim it off with a large spoon. We call it a skimmer. Apart from the usual meat components, today I'm adding walnuts to the mix. They're for the salad. Not just walnuts, though. I'm throwing in some salt, cinnamon and vanilla into the broth. Into the simmering water, I then toss peeled onions, a bay leaf and some lemons. Squeezing the lemon adds a more intense flavour. Coffee time. One cup in the morning wasn't enough, so I'm having a second. Fortunately, I have the time. I prefer making good coffee in a copper pot, using spring water with no peculiar odours. Some add coffee to already boiling water, but I like to start with cold water. It gives a richer taste.
it's ready. You need to remove it from the heater as soon as it starts to boil. Mickey, my goat, is nearby, eagerly anticipating his treat. Of course, he won't be getting any veggies or greens, as I'll need those, but some nuts will keep him happy. I take a little stroll, keeping an eye on Mickey to make sure he doesn't snatch my coffee. Time to retrieve the brains. They're quite fatty, so some fat will be in the broth. Last year's garlic, a whole head of it is what I need. Plus, I've got a big pan with hot oil ready to go. After letting the brains cool down a bit, I cut them in half. The oil is piping hot. I toss in some garlic and pepper, but I'll remove them before they burn, allowing the oil to just take on their flavors. Now pay attention to the amount of oil in the pan. I need enough to deep fry the brain pieces. They should be flipped to cook on all sides. Ready! The brains come out browned and well done.
I set the garlic and pepper aside and garnish with greens and lemons on top. Now for the beetroot from my garden, along with some pepper and garlic. I grate the beetroot in a bowl, then add the finely grated garlic along with chopped greens and walnuts, and, of course, a pinch of salt. With the main ingredients ready, it's time to add the mayonnaise to the mix, a generous portion, and I'll give it a good mix. Time to bake some bread. The best bread is homemade and the dough comes together quickly. I make some holes in it. They allow the loaf to heat up from the inside. Then, I place the loaf on a hot, oiled metal surface using a special bread shovel. I flip the loaf and let it sit on the heated stove a bit longer. It's ready. Another one goes on. Mickey the goat knows the scent of fresh bread and rushes over for his share. His herd of sheep follows suit. Everyone gets their portion, but the big loaf is all mine. <laughs> no goats are getting that. Time to make one more loaf. Now it's time for the puppies to join in as I share the meat. They deserve a treat too.
I slice some brains. Add my beetroot salad. And tuck it all into the bread, kind of like a pita. Let's give it a try. Oh, super delicious.